are you feeling? Great. Great? All right. Is this you being polite? Or are you telling me the truth? Because you know, usually when you're asked this question, these are the two answers you can get, right? Well, sometimes there is a third answer. You're not even sure how you feel. But here's the thing. Even when you're not sure, there is always a part of you that knows. And there is a way to find out. Because knowing how you really feel can be the key to living the life you truly want and not just settling for what you've got. The day I turned 28, I remember thinking, wow, I've made it. I realized my dream of performing with a professional dance crew in Casablanca at age 16. I then moved to Paris and was living this wonderful life. I had graduated valedictorian from the most competitive finance masters. I was then on the fastest promotion track in the largest private equity fund in Europe. My next promotion to be a director in the New York office was already on the table. And when I wasn't working, I was dancing three times a week, I was traveling the world, and I was about to marry my college sweetheart of seven years. Looks like I had it all, right? Until that morning, I woke up and I could barely open my eyes. I tried hard, but I just couldn't. I turned towards my fiance and I saw panic in his eyes. He said, do not look at yourself in the mirror and let's run to the hospital. I couldn't resist looking at myself and I was horrified by what I saw. Imagine your face so swollen and deformed that you can't even recognize yourself. Imagine looking at your body and every single part of it is covered with red welts, all with different shapes and volumes. The doctor's diagnosis was that I had giant hives or angedema. Initially, I thought, it's probably an allergy. We'll figure it out and I'll be back to normal in no time. Little did I know that it wasn't an allergy, but the beginning of a long journey to understand what this was truly about. The next 12 months were all about doctors, tests, waiting rooms. We discovered that I had developed an autoimmune disease. During that year, I hated my body. Every single day, I woke up entirely covered with hives, and they were so itchy, it was excruciating. My mom, who is a doctor, advises me to talk to a therapist. A disease like that doesn't start out of the blue, she said. Your body is trying to tell you something. <laughs> I thought she was a little bit woo-woo. What could my body possibly know that I haven't already heard? My mom being very persistent, I ended up seeing a therapist. And after I've spent 45 minutes painting the picture of the perfect life I've built, the therapist said, Lamia, I only have one question for you. Is this what you truly want? I leave her office, jump in a cab, and call my mom. I tell her, I will not see this therapist again. She doesn't get me. I hang up, and I silently confess to myself, the therapist was onto something. Was this what I really wanted? But very quickly, I dismissed that thought, and I even reprimanded myself. How dare I? question this life that I worked so hard for. It must be perfect, right? So I resolved myself to marry the man I fell in love with eight years prior and continue to thrive in a job many people envy. When that car dropped me off at the office, I left that little voice in the cab and carried on with my life. 
In that next chapter, I performed my life like ballet dancers. You know, they come on stage with a beautiful costume. They perform so perfectly. It even looks effortless. But once backstage, they remove their ballet shoes and see their feet damaged and smashed. Being myself a dancer, I felt that every day I was back to performing. I was wearing a beautiful costume to cover my hives, would go to work, but back home, I'd remove it to reveal the truth, a body full of hives. Now, fast forward two years, I am the one who wants to see a therapist. Because that life that I wasn't ready to abandon was totally falling apart. I was initiating a double divorce from my husband and my job. I was going through the hardest time of my life, but I didn't have any hives, and my blood work was completely normal. How could this be possible? How can those hives that I was told would intensify with stress be absent. Something didn't make sense, and I was determined to find out what it was. Through my readings, I came across the science of psychoneuroimmunology, or PNI. PNI studies the bidirectional relationships between our psychological and biological processes and their implications for health. And one thing that I've learned was that during stress, my body believes it's an imminent danger and puts itself into fight or flight, which activates my immune system and primes it to overreact. And when the stress is chronic, the inflammation stays elevated. And that creates increased risk of health problems. So I got curious. What chronic stress could this be? It wasn't the obvious one, from long working days, big deals, hard deadlines. One of the books that was the most eye-opening to me was When the Body Says No by Dr. Gabor Mate. In his book, he identifies that it is the subconscious or automatic type of stress that takes a physical toll on the body. The stress that is rooted in childhood experiences and relates to things like lack of self-worth, people pleasing, or the difficulty to say no, even if it means neglecting our own emotional needs. Simply put, failure to identify and meet those needs creates stress in the body. For me, this meant unless I examined those stress factors and developed the ability to say no, basically, any time I truly wanted to say no, but I was afraid to, my body will end up saying no for me. What this helped me realize was that as painful as it was to leave that perfect life behind, I was finally in my truth. I was finally saying no. Say no to the life I planned for so I could say yes to the life that was authentically mine. I understood how much wisdom my body has. And that's when I admitted to myself that I had actually been performing my life for longer than I thought, long before the hives. See, for a decade, in performing my perfect life, I was actually hiding my true self, a self that I compromised just to fit in, to be validated, thinking that it would make me feel that I am enough, finally. But as perfect as that life looked, it was suffocating. And that's why my body had to scream the truth, because my mind was in complete denial. My mind, I mean, my body didn't know how to fool itself 
like my mind did. My mom was right. My body was trying to tell me something. This body, my inner lie detector, my ultimate truth teller, was actually a superpower. And so now I had to figure out how to make my mind conscious of my body's wisdom so I can use that superpower. Remember the question from that first therapist? Was this what I truly wanted? I was finally ready to answer it. First, I had to return to the body and turn my attention to its signals because that's the body's job. Through its sensations, feelings, often uncomfortable ones for sure, our body sends us messages that are designed to make us aware. We naturally want to run from them, like I did, but accessing the superpower lies in moving towards them. And here are the three steps I used to read those messages. Recognize, reflect, reinvent. Starting with recognize, when the therapist asked me the question, I remember that my stomach churned. Deep down, I recognized she was right. But at the same time, I felt I didn't have the right to question anything. Why? Why did I feel scared, guilty, and disempowered in my own life? This is when I moved to step two, reflect. Thanks to many more therapy sessions, to meditation and journaling, I gained awareness on the why. See, from a very young age, I learned that achievements would result in warm smiles, compliments, and love. Lamia, look at you. You came top of your class again. And your last dance show was amazing. And you made your parents so proud. What a special little girl you are. Well, that little girl became addicted to the external validation that comes from those achievements and sought to achieve at higher and higher realms. It was like I was on a mission, a very competitive one. And that mission pushed me to build a life I thought I should be living. And the simple thought of dismantling it meant for me losing what I thought was my source of self-worth and love. So now that I was aware of what was holding me back and the impact it had, it was time to move to action. And that's the third step, reinvent. I started by imagining what would my life look like if I didn't constantly outsource my self-worth and love to others? What would I be doing, thinking, creating? For me, it looked like taking a break and coming back to business school here at Stanford to figure out what it is that I really wanted. But it can look different for everyone. What matters is to take that time to explore and experiment. This process of moving from autopilot to consciousness and then change is not one and done. It's iterative and requires repetition. So our brains create new neural connections and behaviors. Today, as I'm talking to you, I wish I could tell you I don't have hives anymore and share with you my magic recipe for healing so you can be happy and stress-free. But that's not the reality, nor my message. The truth is, it's an endless dance between the mind and the body. Let's be real. My highs still pay me a visit occasionally. And the last time they came to hang out, they left me a love letter, and I just had to share it with you today. 
I mean, who knew that hops could be so romantic, right? <laughs> Dear Lamia, for years I tried to make myself heard, but you kept putting me on mute. So I created this bold red costume. Sorry for the itchiness. I used to feel so rejected, but now I'm grateful because you don't hate me anymore. You talk to me, you even cuddle me sometimes. This makes me so happy. Seeing you slowly understand that I'm not here to annoy you, but to guide you. And aren't a few days of discomfort worth years of not losing yourself again? I will not let you down. I'll always be your loyal friend. I know what you're thinking. No more hives, please. Don't worry. If you see me again, I'll give you a little secret. All I ask is that you pause and ask me, how do you feel? What do you need? Is there something you're trying to say that my mind is ignoring? Looking back, I don't regret any of the choices I made. They were the catalyst to start living my life from the inside out. They were the gift that introduced me to the most powerful accountability partner, my accountability body. I want to leave you with this quote from Nietzsche that says, there is more wisdom in your body than in your deepest philosophy. So I invite all of us to honor the wisdom of our bodies, to listen to those messages of truth that at the end tell us how we're really feeling and if this is what we truly want. Because if we don't listen, who knows what costume our body will create to make us pause. And if that happens, I invite you to remember that your body is your greatest ally. So now, let me ask you one more time. How are you feeling? Thank you.